Hello, this video will provide an overview of the optimization or automatic member selection techniques available in Tower. This video covers features that have been in the software for some time and doesn't cover any new features. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a slightly modified version of the Example 6 model that ships with the software. The optimization techniques available in Tower attempt to find the lowest cost of the members for all angle groups. Since we don't know the cost of steel members, we are assuming that the cost is directly proportional to the steel weight. Tower then applies some cost multipliers to the member weight that result in an effective weight or cost. This relationship is shown here. Of the four terms in this equation, the member weight and the dead load factor for the section should be well-known terms to most users that model lattice tower structures. The other two terms might be a bit more obscure. The optimized cost factor is the value that you set for each angle. Therefore, you enter it into the angle component library, which is where you would capture all of the cross-sectional properties for your members. In this table, at the far right-hand side, are some purple or periwinkle shaded cells. These are all optional input fields. The optimized cost factor is used to make certain angles either more or less attractive for selection. A value of less than 1 will reduce the effective weight or the cost of the member, whilst a value larger than 1 increases the effective weight. And if you set this value to 0, that means that the angle size will be excluded in any optimizations. You can choose to make selective use of this factor throughout your angle library to reflect the availability of angles or any preferences you have on angle member sizes. There might also be cases where certain angles were available historically and so they still appear in the library, but you don't want to consider them for use on any new designs. An alternative approach here is to make a separate component angle library with only the sizes you wish to consider for algorithms. You can then switch between these two files for different design stages, and this is done through the File Preferences menu. Ultimately, how you choose to handle this is up to you. The cost factor for alternate steel material is relevant when you wish to make use of two grades of steel in your model. This provides an indication of the differential cost between the two grades of steel. To specify the first grade of steel, you would do this under the Material Type column in the Geometry Groups Table Edit dialog. In my example, I have selected grade A53 as the steel grade for all groups. The second grade of material to be considered is specified in the dialog found in General Optimization Options. In this case, I select an alternative steel material of grade A36. Now, A36 is a lower grade steel and thus likely to be cheaper than grade A53. So I have entered a value of 0.85 to indicate that the alternate grade is 15% more cost effective than the originally specified grade. This dialog goes beyond just specifying the alternate grade of steel. And in fact, it's very important if you plan on using any of the optimization capabilities of Tower. We can also specify bolt grades to be used or considered when we replace members. And we can choose how the bolted connections are designed, whether we use the actual force in the member or if we use the member's capacity, whether that's compression or tension or the minimum or maximum overall capacity. We can also decide how to address slenderness ratio limits and our options are to ignore violations or we can respect these violations or limits for new members or for a combination of new and existing members. The very last part of this dialogue is a little bit of a legacy capability and it's not necessarily going to be used if you are modeling towers using our family manager capabilities. In family managed models, all groups and members are considered by the optimization algorithms. However, before Family Manager was available, this option would allow you to select multiple models which can be included in any optimization run. 
You might actually still find use for this if you're modeling towers that are not fully supported in the family manager setup, such as guide Vs or portal type structures. Once you have addressed these terms and any other information entered into general optimization options dialog, there is one more piece of data needed. Back in the geometry groups table edit dialog, the last two columns at the right hand side need to have data entered. These selections determine if a group is eligible for optimization and if so, what magnitude of allowable changes there can be. The first of these columns specifies what properties of the group can be optimized. Here our options are none, size only, this keeps the angle type the same as currently selected and only considers other size and thickness members. Size and type, this is useful to allow for more effective cross-sectional shapes such as optimizing a member to make use of an unequal legged angle even if the equal legged angle was initially entered. And the last option will keep the number of angles the same and this is useful if you want to ensure that your connection details remain correct as you are changing members around. The second column specifies the allowable additional angle width that can be considered when you are allowing the size of the angle to be changed. Entering a value of zero or leaving the cell blank indicates that the width of angle members are not allowed to be changed. That still allows the leg thickness and material grade to be changed, but keeps the size of the member similar. A non-zero value indicates that the leg thickness and the angle width can be changed up to the limit of the current angle width plus this delta W value that's been entered. I will try and illustrate how these options behave once we start looking at the optimization functions. In order to gain access to the available optimization functions, you need to make an initial run of your model. This is so that the software knows the member forces and usages. Once a model has run, navigate to the model menu and the following three optimization options or types are available. Interactive member sizing, which is very useful for reinforcing a few members on an existing tower. Auto fix angles, which applies the automatic replacement of all overloaded groups. And optimize, which is an automatic selection of all angle members on the tower. Very useful for new designs. Let's look first at the interactive member sizing. Make sure that you're in the deform geometry view and then activate the tool by selecting model interactive member sizing. Then click on any group. This doesn't have to just be an overloaded group, but it can be any group on the model. Doing this opens up the group angle size selection dialog. This shows quite a bit of information. At the top is the current groups information, and then it provides a list of viable angle members, ranked from lightest to heaviest effective weight. Note that the weight reported here is the effective weight, which we've described earlier. In this case, you can see the difference in effective weight is based on the cost factor for alternate steel material. And so the actual member weight reported using grade A53 material is 143.02 newtons per meter, while the same size member in grade A36 has an effective member weight of 121.57 newtons per meter that 15% cost difference between the steel grades. Each viable member size also has the steel grade, an estimate of the member utilization and the number of bolts that are needed. Below this list, there are some buttons. Clicking on the generate report button will produce a report about the loading and usage of the members in the group and provides detail, details about the possible replacement members. Clicking on the View Group Summary button will jump you into the Group Summary table, which allows you to see the usage and capacities of the group for both its compression and tension usage. This information can help you choose a replacement member. You can change an angle member or group by 
clicking on the row in the table that you're interested in and then either select the OK button or double click on that row. If you want to abort and not make any changes, you can press the cancel button at this stage. In this example, I have made a few varied choices of the optimized group properties in the angle groups table. Let's see the impact of these choices to illustrate the behavior of the different options. For the lower leg group, I had set to optimize the size only. This keeps the type of member the same. In this case, you can see that equal legged angles are only considered. For the lower leg crossing diagonal members, I had set to optimize size and type. And so any possible member type and size is offered as possible solutions. In this case, even some of the double angle variants are proposed. If I wanted to keep this as only considering single angles, I can go back to the groups table and change the optimized group value to same number of angles. Now you can see that only single angles are proposed. For the next leg member up the tower, I had instructed tower to only consider adjusting the leg thickness. I did this by selecting size only and then by entering an allowable extra width value equal to zero. In this case, it keeps the type and size of the angle as an equal legged four inch by four inch angle and only considers different leg thicknesses and material grades. You can keep making changes in this manner for all the groups in the tower that you wish to change. The really nice thing with this feature is that you've got full control of which groups are updated and even more so which members they are replaced with. It can be time consuming though. The next choice to look at is the auto fix angles command. This feature is somewhat similar to the interactive member sizing, except that in this case, the design of all overloaded groups is automatically changed to make use of the most economical angle size and number of bolts for each group. Running this command produces a report detailing the changes made to the various groups. And after rerunning the analysis, you should now see that there are no overloaded members. This approach is very fast, but it gives you less control over what members are substituted in. The last optimization technique is a full tower optimization. The algorithm will select the most cost effective member for all groups on the tower and not just consider overloaded ones. You will get a report of the optimization, which showcases any weight savings that might have come about, and it will provide a list of any changes that were made. This approach is very fast, obviously depending on the complexity of your model, but it does not give you much control into what the outcome of the optimization is. I just want to mention something that might have jumped out to experienced tower users. Sometimes when you've defined many limitations or constraints for the optimization algorithm, you may see some errors appearing in the optimization run report. These are typically benign and are simply indicating that as the optimization went through various iterations, it was not able to improve certain angle groups. This is sometimes resolved during the optimization and by the final run a suitable solution is proposed, or sometimes a group member size remains unchanged. For example, in this model, group 14 is not changed. You could also see some blue text indicating model warnings. In our case, we have a few and these resulted from allowing the one group to change the angle type, which resulted in it selecting double angle members. However, the input information for the connection details for the bolted connections was made for, si for a single angle. If we were to accept the double angle solution, we should then go update the connection design to resolve this warning. The other warning we receive is that some of the members still have slenderness ratio violations. Remember group 14 that I mentioned earlier? 
while these members already had violations on the slenderness ratio limits. And we had entered under general optimization options that slenderness ratio or L over R limits would only be respected for new members. So these existing members retained the KL over R warning. If we wanted this to be resolved, we could change these input settings and try re-optimize the tower. Please note that no matter how good a member selection algorithm may be, no design should ever be accepted for production without careful inspection by an experienced tower designer. Our optimization functions should not be used as complete black box processes. They are provided to help you make good and swift design decisions, but you are the person ultimately responsible for the design. For example, on this model, the main corner posts on the tower cage actually increase in size near the top of the tower. This might not be ideal, and so the results should be scrutinized to make sense and consider practical detailing and installation practices. As mentioned initially, full optimization is ideally used during the initial design stages. Often though, the optimal tower weight is dependent on several factors, with various geometric parameters and bracing patterns needing to be considered. A study of any of these parameters can be undertaken quite swiftly using tower and the optimization functions. I will briefly look at the leg slope of this model. The current tower after optimization weighs in at approximately 5 tons and has a leg slope which we can measure being about 10 degrees. Using the tool to change the leg slope, this is geometry change leg slope, we can then perform another optimization so that we get a new optimum weight considering the different leg slope. We can then repeat this step several times, keeping a log of the leg slopes and tower weights, and we'll swiftly come up to a chart showing the trend of the tower weight versus the leg slope. This type of study can help you close in on the best possible leg slope for the design. A similar approach can be taken to studying bracing patterns or other tower geometry. And this is really where tower optimization algorithms give you as a designer a lot of power. One last thing I want to mention is that on a new design, your initial guess of member sizes and the number of bolts don't need to be very accurate. Let's go back and edit our model and make sure that all the members on the tower are the same size and material grade. This is done back in the geometry groups table. We could also go to the geometry members table and override the number of bolts for each member connection if we wanted to. I won't do that now though. This model now makes no practical sense, but if we run an optimization on the model, we will still come to a reasonable solution with appropriately sized members and the correct number of bolts needed in the bolted connections. This can save you a lot of initial speculative calculations and it can really streamline your workflow. Please keep in mind that by changing the size of members, you are impacting the stiffness and thus the structural response of the model. This means that you could have a different load flow through the structure and result in different member loads. We thus recommend that once you've used any of these member optimization approaches, you should do another run of your model to confirm that the new load flow is still supported by the optimized member sizes. You may need a couple of iterations to come down to a final workable solution. We hope that this video gives a good overview of the optimization options in Tower and the various ways you can leverage to get solid, sensible results for your lattice towers. For more information about our software, including additional videos and technical notes, please visit our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, or any other information, please send us an email using the addresses on the screen. Thank you for watching our video and for your interest in the software, the industry standard in overhead line design.